but my number nine is El Grande. I would call this the daddy of area control. We've talked about Blood Rage, and that's the fine, angry... Does it have Vikings ...ginger mohawk stepchild. No. Um, I, I, I'm just upset it's not higher. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, we'll, I mean, obviously, you'll wax lyrical when it's your sister, so you should probably keep some opinions yeah, yeah, yeah. bottled up, repress them. Um, but for me, El Grande is one of the most, like, classically beautiful games. Like, this is the old edition before like, they redid it with all the meeples, which I think would probably look really nice and maybe be easier to count. But, like, when... If you think of, like, classic Euro games, like, classic good Euro games, like, El Grande is, like, pretty much top of the pile. I mean, look at the sad the sad guy on the cover. Like, some sort of... I mean, and yet you've got that... that exactly the right amount of bling with the Castello. Like, the three-dimensionality of that. Like, it put... Like, oh, my God, the difference it makes that there's a big black wooden tower on the board. And the king is this enormous maple. Enormous... Like classical pawn, um, you've got the best initiative system. Is it a king or is it a duke? It's a king. It's the king. king. The king. Okay, right. um, you have got you have got the best initiative system in any game. Mm. Like in the rule book, it doesn't say why it is the way it is, but I've always taught it as you know, like well, the more time you spend gathering up your nobles to exert your influence over Spain the slower you can react. So the lower number of initiative cards for who's going to go first have got more guys that you're going to summon from your court, and then the higher ones have got fewer. Like, that is so clever, and that the lowest person plays their card first next time, you can't play the same number as anybody else. Like, there, that's a good enough thing to, like, practically be a game. Like, the initiative system is so, mm. so clever, and it dictates so much. And then you've got those action selection cards, like the one, two, three, four, five. With the five always remaining the same, that's really important, so you can move the king and you can exert a lot of force and pressure, but it's quite a blunt, simple move, whereas, like, and the moves get more convoluted and more involved the fewer caballeros you actually put onto the board. So, again, like, if you want to sit there and scheme and whatever, then you can actually do le almost less interesting things. Yes. Um, and one of my favourite things in any game you aren't going to see the same cards every freaking game. Like, you cannot see the same cards every single game. You might be like, oh, well, I was, I was, my whole strategy was built around uh, the so-and-so card coming out. Well, you can't do that, because it might not come out, dingus. Like, play the game properly, like, as it's happening. Uh, the genius part of, like, you can only put your models in the areas adjacent to the king, that, again, like, because it's, it's like, one of the things I keep writing down every time I talk about a game is the number of decisions that you get to make in a game. And El Grande, on your turn, what initiative card do I play, bearing in mind everybody else and what I want to do on my turn? Which card do I take, bearing in mind what everybody else has taken, my initiative and everything else? How many caballeros, which caballeros do I put down in which regions? Like, but all of that is condensed down. Like, those really difficult decisions are condensed down by what cards do I have left which cards are left to pick on the table and which regions are adjacent. Like, the dis yeah. you win this game by playing well. And that's really cool. And, like, you can... I mean, you can lose the game because somebody else is really focused on stopping you. We've had a period of that. Um, but you can win... Like, El Grande, when you earn points in El Grande, oh, my God, they are so sweet. Yeah. Like, the, the, the pacing of that game where it's like, one round, two rounds, scoring round. One round, two rounds, scoring round. One round, two rounds, scoring round, game over. Like, and the little mini alliances that begin to exist. Hey, hey, let's not disrupt the gentle equilibrium that we've got going in this yeah. little area. We're both scoring points here. We don't want him to come in and ruin our points and like that. I'm just happy to have second. Hey, don't worry about me, guys. Um, and being able to move other people's pieces and disrupt things. Oh, my God, I wish I played El Grande more. I... So much more. I think that affects why this isn't even anywhere near my top 10 in that I haven't played it a lot. And when I, like, I think uh, something about the game feels quite lethargic to me. Ooh. Like, the, the type of game it in feels very heavy. Like, yeah, and I feel like, I feel really bad when I make a bad decision in El Grande. Huh. In that I'm... Because as you say, every decision you make is very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I make a decision and I'm going to get it wrong, I admonish myself for it internally. Yeah. And I'm like, like, oh, like I, I said, if I did you that. win this game based on your skill, 
you lose this game also, like based on a bad decision. Yeah. And I like that, but it's it is as you say I, quite intense. Yeah. Right? Like it seems a strange game to maybe marry it with, but I prefer a game like in the same sort of age, I guess, in terms of old version of the game. Yeah, period like, of games. Like period of gaming. Puerto Rico feels more interesting to me in that sort of every decision I make is incredibly vital. Mm. Mm-hmm. I prefer I prefer to play that than I would to play El Grande. I wonder if that's the shared board. Like in El Grande there is a shared board so you're having to coexist whereas in Puerto Rico you do your own Maybe, thing. I mean on one of the own. things that really that I like about a board game is when I can build something for myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I can see something that I've made and I like that in Puerto Rico but because someone can I mean you know the, the nature of the game because someone can very easily undo your stuff mm, and if yeah. you're if you don't get it which I think is one of the things that I don't about our grande is I don't get a lot of the stuff maybe sometimes in sort of yeah. I, it, it falls down in my estimations because I'm like ah oh, why am I just not getting this I know, I, know exact, I, mean. I know exactly what you mean I think that part of the the reason that you have, might have a negative feel towards the game is that we played it we often play it with Jack, who doesn't like the game. Mm. And if you're playing a game with somebody who doesn't like it, it does pull down the game. Yeah. Um, but I would, I would finish by saying, I, I appreciate that you've bottled everything up to save it for yours. I would finish by saying that this is the best, in my opinion, five-player game. If you have five people and they are, they don't mind a proper, you know, two-hour, uh, just under two hours board game. This is the best five-player game that there is. The thing that people might not like... I mean, this is a game for gamers. You don't play this with... You don't... You, I wouldn't say you can... <laughs> well, it won the Spill the Jaras. <laughs> I don't... I just don't think... That, <laughs> I don't think that... I'd bring this game out for people that were new to gaming. No, no question. I would never play this with my parents. No. I wouldn't take it to the kids' board game club. And maybe I'll go into a bit more when, when it comes to you. Him. <laughs> but... Because it's probably on your list. Because um, you like this kind of... And he hasn't said anything. But yeah. is that I think at some point the combative nature... I mean, I've just talked about Blood Rage and how I love killing things. <laughs> but that sort of, why are you attacking me? Why don't you go after them kind of thing. I think your problem is that this is passive aggression. It is passive aggression. Rather than aggression, aggression. If you could be yeah. like, my caballeros invade your land and kill you, then like, you'd be fine. With Blood Rage... You're meant to attack everybody all the time. Yeah. In this, I like I like the idea that you can set up little things and do stuff, but then it's like, oh, why are you attacking me? Oh, I'm just attacking you. Oh, but oh, because Tom convinced we've, me up to or whatever. We've, it's like, we've often it's... joked that yeah. this would have a really good Game of Thrones skin, yeah. and if Blood Rage is the Dothraki master of ships side of Game of Thrones, this is the master of whispers. Hmm. Like this is this is a game of careful manoeuvring. Not making a fuss, not making a stink. This is the Tyrell. This is the Martell. You will totally agree with this completely. Prepare for the face. But you all agree. But I think the Game of Thrones board game does that, and I like that combative nature and deal making things bigger than the face. Because (laughs) of the theme. To even compare them. I just think the theme of Game of Thrones. So if this was Game of Thrones, Grande. Game of Thrones Grande, you would like it more. I think maybe, if, yeah, because El obviously... Game it's... of Thrones. <laughs> El Game of Thrones. The Martell game? <laughs> it is, El Game, yeah. El Game of Thrones. Maybe if, it did have, maybe if it did have a Game of Thrones skill on it, I'd be more inclined to like it. So, because what we're saying is you're think... quite superficial. Theme, bitches! <laughs> Super. Hey, Alec, would you play this any time? This, this, this should be much higher on your list. <laughs> hey! Oh.